warm welcome to a new episode of Leaders of Tomorrow season 10 I'm Ritwika Gupta Now this year's festive season means so much more in 2022 as we were all left reeling with a huge void over the last 2 years The season also marks the start of multiple marketing campaigns Today we are going to try and find out how festive communication has evolved over the years and how brands can stay relevant during this period I'll be first chatting with Shamsuddin Jassani CEO Wonderman Thompson South Asia Group and on the other side of the break, a very interesting conversation is lined up with Anil Vishwanathan, who till very recently served as the VP Marketing at Mondelez India and is now MD Vietnam Southeast Asia, Mondelez International. Thank you, Shams, for joining us today on this very special Diwali edition of Leaders of Tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, you know, before we start the interview, I actually want to tell you uh, the reason why I want to talk to you today. So, our show is about, you know, entrepreneurship, startups, and for the Diwali season, I actually want to talk about the branding perspective. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about brands, how they need to communicate, because that's like a topic of conversation that's been going on for the last couple of years. So let's begin by talking about, uh, if you can tell us, you know, an overview of festive communication over the years and how things have changed today. Uh, yeah, I think festive communication, people used to look forward to, you know, amazing ads that used to come out during Diwali seasons. Uh, and uh, that was the time when, you know, your happiness quotient was at the highest, people were... Uh, just getting into holiday mode and wanted to enjoy themselves and looking forward to great campaigns. And there were some amazing campaigns that were there. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, I think that has changed a bit. Uh, and I think we need to kind of dial up that fun quotient a little bit more, that uh, bigness of the brand uh, a little bit more is, is, is what I believe in. So I think, yeah, so I think that's, that's something that we need to get back to. Right. The last couple of years, we saw a lot of focus on nostalgia you know, on uh, generosity, hope and stuff. So do you, do you see similar trends this year as well? Uh, yeah, I think a few things, what's happened in the last couple of years is that um, it's predominantly become, one is of course nostalgia and, and going back to that. Second thing is, is more, it became very transactional. Uh, purely because, you know, dynamics changed, uh, the consumer patterns, habits changed, yeah. how people are consuming content has changed and hence advertising changed. Uh, the pandemic forced a lot of changes in consumer behavior. Uh, people started adopting technology at a much faster pace than they would earlier, especially the 45 plus age bracket, which earlier was not so much adaptive towards technology. It's really in the last two years that's changed a lot. Uh, so the, the, uh, the ease with which and the comfort with technology has changed in the last two years. Uh, so what's happened in the last two years also is that the e-commerce players were you know, the large spenders and the technology companies with the large spenders that yeah. were happening. Uh, but I think um, 2022 now, uh, with things unlocking, with things opening up again, uh, I am thinking that things will be a good mix of old and new um, by traditional and, uh, you know, uh, technology, uh, you know, a mix of those things. And I think going back to a lot more of... Uh, Yes, there will be tactical campaigns, yeah. but also a lot more campaigns which are uh, more brand focused, more strategy focused. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, so I think that's that's where things are going to happen. Right. You know, picking up from what you said, if you can really outline for us, you know, the three or four key traits of the post-pandemic festive shopper today and what it means for brands. Yeah. So, I think few things have changed which are not going to go back to normal. Uh, as I said, the adoption of technology has really, really sped up. Uh, that's also meant the access that the uh, tier two and tier three towns have towards A, commerce and B, content uh, means that the um, aspirational levels that were earlier limited only towards the bigger towns and cities are now spreading across India. Yeah. Uh, so people want to buy more, people want to look better across India. Uh, so hence, you will see a lot more of uh, shopping happening in the smaller towns and cities as well because there, the physical access is limited, hence the e-commerce plays a major role. Yeah. Uh, but I also feel that the last two years of pandemic, uh, there was a complete shift towards digital. Now I think things are coming back to also traditional. Things are opening up, brick and mortar stores are opening up. Yeah. 
uh, but yeah i i do feel that from 2019 to 2022 there clearly is a shift in terms of what uh, how the consumer consumption patterns are right uh, so the consumption patterns have changed hence the as advertisers we need to also start um, you know overlaying our marketing based on those consumption patterns right. and based on where the consumer is spending the maximum amount of time and where he or she is being influenced uh, and i think the other one that we need to take big cognizance of is content marketing and content creation okay uh, those two are also going to be a big part of the mix as we go forward all right so um according to you this year you know which categories are likely to be the biggest spenders and are there any new surprises this year in terms of categories uh not surprises i would say uh, so your commerce companies are still going to be there you know the big billion dollar sales that those are all still going to be top of the mind they're going to sp- still spend a lot uh but i think uh, uh, fmcgs are doing very well auto as a category has really really bounced back uh so it'll be a good healthy mix of what we call traditional advertisers and digital first kind yeah. of brands that is there which i don't think existed earlier if you see the spends over the past couple of years it's been dominated by more the digital first categories right. i think now the traditional spenders are going to come back a lot more so it'll be a good balance between the two so not a surprise in a way of a new category mm-hmm. but a surprise in the comeback of uh, you know spends from old categories as well as i think uh, tourism uh, i think everyone uh, is is out uh, and everyone is traveling, is traveling. <laughs> uh, you know everyone's in, everyone's wanting to travel so yeah. i think that's another category which is really really uh, i'm looking forward to it as well uh, in terms of bouncing back uh, they've had a difficult couple of years that industry but i think uh, things are bouncing back and especially the leisure travel uh industry is really picking up so i i feel that that's one thing uh, you will see a lot more of and in terms of media platforms uh, is digital going to be the front runner or uh it will be neck to neck yeah uh, i would still feel that television will be slightly higher just about maybe 2% 3% here and there but it is neck to neck but between digital and television uh they it's going to be about 80% of all spends is going to be between these two mediums uh so so i think that's where things are it is neck to neck and i think this is the year when the change happens between uh, digital and television but again um i i would also refrain from using the same words because uh, i would just say it's video consumption now whether you consuming it on your uh, screen on a larger screen or a smaller screen uh, whether it's uh, bite size videos or long format videos or, yeah. or or movies that are you're watching uh i think now people are agnostic of where they're consuming so i think we also need to stop uh, calling it uh, you know traditional and digital advertising okay so you know uh, shams like i was uh, earlier saying our show is about empowering small or medium sized businesses now they might not have a hefty uh, budget in terms of you know marketing but the festive season means a lot to them you know in terms of really boosting their sales what advice would you have for smaller brands smaller businesses you know yeah. to leverage the festive season pretty much season? stole half of what i was going to say but uh, yeah it, it, the difficulty is that you will not have the money to get the share of voice that uh, the large brands would uh, so you need to be very smart about it you need to have uh, you, you creative need to speak and now i think you need to understand that uh there is a third dimension to creativity earlier when we talk about traditional advertising uh, it was about storytelling it was about great art forms whether it's about you know written or whether it's about uh, you know the image that you produced uh, because the platforms were uh, they they were confined and they were few so if you're a television commercial it's a 30 second or if it's a, a print ad you pretty much need the dimensions or, or holding that were there uh but with the digital and content creation becoming so big uh the creativity is through the creative use of platforms and technologies right so i think as entrepreneurs you need to uh, understand and leverage each medium to its strength and and let your creativity talk through the use of that medium right and digital i think it can uh, you can use it very effectively with a limited budget So if you have a limited budget you need to use uh digital in a way where it can make a big bang for the buck and use content uh in a great way as well. Well on that note thank you so much for talking to us it was lovely. My pleasure. Thank you. It's time for a quick break we'll be back shortly stay tuned.
Welcome back. You're watching Leaders of Tomorrow Season 10. I'll now be chatting with Anil Vishwanathan to understand how Cadbury celebrations and the messaging it chooses to share can play a crucial role in driving consumer sentiment. Take a look. Thank you, Anil, for joining us today on this very special edition of Leaders of Tomorrow. Very happy to be here. So, you know, I'm going to uh, dive straight in. Um, what's the, you know, sense like, you know, for your festive outlook this year, you know, are consumers showing more enthusiasm compared to the last two years? Um, yes, uh, definitely that's what uh, uh, I feel. I think uh, there is a great uh, sense of buoyancy. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, people wanting to step out. It's been two years that they've not been able to travel. Yeah. Uh, they've been cautious. Uh, they've had to cut down. Uh, there was a lot of uncertainty. So all of that is slowly going away. And hence, uh, we definitely feel that there's a great degree of positive sentiment and a rebound uh, with which people are kind of uh, coming back and celebrating the festivals. Of course, there are quite a few headwinds as well. Yeah. Quite a few, you know, kind of macro uh, macroeconomic and things around us remains a little bit of uncertain, but at a, at a very broad level, I do feel that it's going to be largely positive. Anand, if you could also just elaborate for us, what are the traits of the post-pandemic festive shopper? And what do brands like big brands like yours need to keep in mind when they are communicating with the consumer today? Sure. I think firstly, uh, it would be incorrect to bucket all shoppers in one single kind of common uh, broad brush. I think it will be good to think about segments. Yeah. And we do anticipate that different segments and different types of cohorts are be going to behave differently. So there's definitely going to be one segment of the shopper who's going to be very conscious of the amount of money that he's going to spend, who are possibly going to be trade off and make a few choices towards value. Yeah. So I think budgets are going to be tight. So there's one cohort where we anticipate that they're going to go for value mm -hmm. and they're going to you know transact with brands mm -hmm. and categories which offer mm -hmm. them most value. And value is not just the absolute price of an item, but really both tangible and intangible value. So that's definitely one area. On the other hand, yeah. we would anticipate that affluent consumers are going to possibly do a, a revenge gifting because they haven't gifted the last couple of years. So they might, you might, and we might also, or we are looking at the premium segment also kind of going up. So you see, you know, kind of counter trends coming up. Yeah. Uh, but at a fundamental level, I think, as I, I was just mentioning earlier as well, I think we do feel that the sentiment is going to be positive across segments. Mm -hmm. I think so one, I spoke about value and premium and both yeah. being equal trends. I think uh, uh, on top of it, in a post pandemic, possibly some of the consistent themes are around brands that are, uh, that are, that are, that consumers trust brands that represent quality, I think those themes will continue to remain. Yeah. I, I, and I think uh, uh, today it almost it's almost as if there's a new base, a new filter through which consumers are evaluating brands and yeah. categories. And those that uh, are still meaningful, who mm -hmm. have invested in meaning, who have invested in strengthening the relationships uh, with the consumers, are the ones which are likely to get picked up more. And the consumers are most likely to opt out or trade out of categories which have been absent or categories they now feel are frivolous or you know uh, too much of um, uh, you know too much of uh, value without without very clear uh, too much of price without very clear of what the value is those are the categories which are likely to start feeling traded down Right. You know, Cadbury is synonymous to uh, festive gifting, you know, um, I think it's probably, if I may say, even more popular, you know, instead of giving like traditional mitai, people would love to give a Cadbury celebrations pack. Um, where do you think this brand loyalty comes from? And what, according to you, are some of the factors, you know, that has led to Cadbury's dominance, you know, in this market? I think, uh, uh, obviously, uh, you know, the fact that we have stayed invested uh, in the festivals for a long period of time has helped us. As a brand and a category also, just the period of time that we have spent in the market leading the conversations on the category, representing the category. We call ourselves that we represent the taste of chocolate. We recruit people into the taste of chocolate yeah. in the country. So I think, uh, you know, in that sense, ubiquity or synonymity to the category obviously makes us 
very visible, makes the brand very visible. I think on top of it, uh, and, and the same story kind of uh, flows into festivals as well, because we very, very soon realized, early on in the category development realized, mm -hmm. that gifting and festivals is going to play a big role yeah. in the growth of our category, which is where we made gifting a very, very big part of our strategy. Uh, uh, in many markets we have seen, mm -hmm. uh, one of the key dimensions of category development is gifting. Uh, gifting is the way through which the category comes into people's houses. It also represents the emotion that yeah. we want to hold as a category. So I think those are the kind of the broad themes for the category. Of course, in India, you know that our journey in chocolate has all been about meetha and kuch meetha ho jaye. And we saw the biggest area where mithais are kind of uh, synonymous is really a festival, right? So I think that's what has made our strategy linked to festival. We have led the strategy of category creation, which is what has made us uh, uh, very, very uh, visible and uh, omnipresent uh, during festivals. So at this point, I want to talk about your campaigns. But before I get to this year's campaign, I actually want to touch on the last two years campaigns as well, not just a Cadbury ad that was um, designed to empower smaller businesses. So our show leaders of tomorrow, it's also about shaping new age entrepreneurs, you know, empowering smaller, medium sized businesses. Um, now, the, when you look back, you know, it's been a year and two years, you know, when you look back, um, what do you think the kind of impact, the on ground impact it actually made in a, you know, in a way to help these businesses? Businesses, you know, in terms of maybe boosting their sales. See, the most important thing and the starting point is awareness, right? The fact that people need to be aware uh, that there are others who might not be having as good a festival as you or as good a life as you. The whole notion of generosity starts by saying there's a little bit that we all can do. Just by acknowledging the fact that there are others with, with problems. Acknowledgement is a big starting point. So we definitely feel that we're making progress on acknowledgement. Uh, that's that's point number one. Point number two, both when we speak to retailers and when we speak to consumers, the desire to say, for the consumer to say, yes, I do want to support my local store. And the local store to feel that, you know what, this kind of an initiative gives me the confidence that actually people are coming to my store. I think both of these uh, are showing the fact that uh, this is a movement that is moving in the right direction. Uh, we're quite confident. I mean, of course, the brand uh, has seen fantastic growth. We're very happy with the brand's performance. Mm -hmm. um, but truth be told, you know, the long term equity that we are able to build both for the issue and for the brand is what gives us much more comfort, much make, yeah, makes us much more excited. Right. So like, did you have like a post campaign analysis, you know, did you actually Absolutely. go to these uh, shops, you know, to like figure out like what sort of, you know, uh, footfalls they had and uh, stuff Absolutely. Like so I think obviously we've not gone into, I mean, the, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of a over ambition to assume that, uh, you know, all footfalls into a store will be driven only by what our brand does. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, I think we've measured for awareness and impact. Mm. Both seems to indicate that we made a dent. It, obviously, the dent is uh, to, the, to, the, to the extent of the stores that we were able to touch. And we know that there are millions and millions of stores. And you won't believe it, in the course of the activity, we realized that actually, as the news spread, we started getting more and more people uh, interested and said, you know what, why don't you include me or why don't you include my category of stores? And we said, hopefully there'll be a, another time and another another round of activation where we could add uh, more stores. So I think uh, that is giving us again the confidence that it has definitely had a positive effect on the stores. Well then talk to us about this year's campaign, the thought behind it, and I've seen it. Um, you know, you're also like helping street hawkers to set up virtual shops. So please elaborate on that. So I think, uh, you know, it's always a, a challenge uh, to build on uh, something which has uh, found a lot of strong consumer feedback, right? Uh, you always worry, especially for our agency partners who are the ones who are briefed, who are the ones who are actually thinking about new ideas to say, okay, what do I say new uh, in this festival or in this, in this campaign? Building on something that is with, 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 with a lot of success, like the one we have had in the past. Uh, there's always the pressure also to you know say oh, how do I get to better. So I think the team is doing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, research. Uh, clearly, we wanted to sustain uh, and continue in the same area of helping those uh, who possibly need help. Mm -hmm. And hence, this year we've come up with a, a new addition to say yes, while there are small stores who are affected, and we tried to do something for them last year. This year, why don't we extend that help to actually those as you call the, the shopless. So sh shops for shopless is the way we want to call the idea. And really it's, it's about the, the, who we loosely call hawkers, but really all those people who have temporary stores, who don't have a pakka store uh, and who are looking for some form of permanence, 
uh, you know, the whole notion, just the way we have as consumers, the notion of our house. Those in the business have a notion of their shop. So, apni uh, dukan, you know, is, is, is a very, very, uh, very, very rich emotion and sentiment. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know with, uh, with the, 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 the travails that our hawkers face, there is, you know, they're exposed to weather, they're exposed to security, they're exposed to inclement conditions. So I think uh, keeping all of that in mind, we felt, what if we uh, potentially create an online virtual solution okay. for hawkers? So and that's really the core of the tech idea, that in our neighborhoods, what if a pack of celebrations could open up a storefront through which consumers could register, people could register the hawkers around them, create a virtual network of hawkers, and then for the consumers themselves to then figure out who are the hawkers around them and they can go and buy. And the reality is so many things around the festivals are actually uh, actually sold through these temporary stores, right? Yeah. Flowers, decoration, idols, diyas. diyas, candles, lanterns in Mumbai. So there's so many things that, and they're all temporary stores because they are temporary things that are required only for the festival and then they shut and move on. So I think uh, that's we, and that's where we felt that there's a great opportunity to build that kind of a virtual network mm -hmm. and just see the power of it. Well, thank you, Anand. It was great chatting with you and wish you a very happy Diwali. Likewise. Wish you a happy Diwali too. With that, it's a wrap on this special edition of Leaders of Tomorrow Season 10. From the entire team of Leaders of Tomorrow, we would like to wish you a very happy Diwali. Thank you and good night.